In this video, we solve homework problem 5.2.29 from Essentials of Statistics, sixth edition by Mario Triola. The problem statement says, assume that different groups of couples use a particular method of gender selection and each couple gives birth to one baby. This method is designed to increase the likelihood that each baby will be a girl, but assume that the method has no effect. So the probability of getting a girl is 0.5. Assume that groups consists of 26 couples. Complete parts A through C below. First, we're asked to find the mean and standard deviation for the number of girls in a group of 26 births. Um, then it just asks us for the mean and it asks us to type an integer or decimal and it says not to round. So to um, help you solve this problem, I'm going to work it on my sheet of paper over here. Now, if you're wondering, oh, how do I calculate the mean or standard deviation when we're dealing with a binomial, um, binomial distribution, um, not to worry. You have this sheet, these formulas and tables um, by Mr. Triola that came with our textbook. Um, so we're in chapter five, and it says right here what the mean is. And the mean is actually very intuitive. The mean turns out to be um, the sample size, uh, times the probability of success in one trial. And the variance turns out to be um, that sample size times the probability of success in one trial times the probability of failure in one trial. And you just take the square root of that to get the standard deviation when you're dealing with a binomial distribution. Okay, so first we're asked to compute the mean and standard deviation for the number of girls in groups of uh, 26 births. So we've got 26 possibilities. So we've got n equals 26 trials here. The probability of success in one trial is 50% uh, or 0 0.5, because um, they told us that right there. Also, you're talking about having a girl or a boy. So assuming that um, the method that is supposed to increase the likelihood of a baby being a girl has no effect, we would say you have a 50% chance of getting a girl and a 50% chance of getting a boy, approximately. Um, so the probability of success is 0 0.5 and we're going to define success to be a baby girl. Now, all we need to compute the mean is those two numbers. So this is actually very intuitive. It's saying you've got 26 babies and the probability of success is one and two or one half. So what's the expected value of babies that you would get out of those 26 babies? Well, half of them. So we're just gonna take um, the sample, uh, I'm saying the sample size, but it's really the number of trials. Sorry about that, should be calling it the number of trials and then we're multiplying it by the probability of success in one trial. So you've got 26 times one half, it's 13. It's exactly what we'd expect just using our intuition. Oh, and we're also asked to compute the standard deviation. Now to find the standard deviation, we need the probability of success in a trial, and we also need the probability of failure in a trial. So you just take one minus P to get the probability of failure in a trial. So if the probability of success is 0.5, then the probability of failure is 0.5. Then we have our formula for variance. It's just N times P times Q. So you get 26 times 0.5, that's our P times Q, it's also 0.5. Um, so you end up with uh, 26 over four, which is 13 over, I wrote three, 13 over two, and that is uh, 6.5. That's the variance. They didn't ask for the variance though, they asked for the standard deviation. So the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So 
So we do 26 times 0.5 times 0.5, and we get 13 over 2, and you take the square root. That's the square root of 26 over 2. Of course. Now, we might um, want to simplify this, or we might, might want a decimal approximation of this, excuse me. And so let's say we'll round to, let's go out to four decimal places, and then we'll look at my lab statistics and see what they want. Okay. So that's our mean and that's our standard deviation, but I'm not sure how many decimal places they want on that one. So let's see. Okay, so the mean is 13, which is exactly what we would expect. Got a 50-50 shot of having a girl. We've got 26 births. I'd expect to have 13 girls. And then the standard deviation, they're asking us to round to one decimal place as needed. And we've got 2.549 and so on. So looking at that 2.54, we're just gonna round to 2.5. It's approximately 2.5 girls. All right, great, that's part A. Now part B asks us to use the range rule of thumb. To find the values Separating results, I'm just writing down the question here, that are significantly low or high. Okay, so remember how this works. So typical values lie within two standard deviations of the mean. So you take your mean and you add two standard deviations and you take your mean and you subtract two standard deviations. And then all of these values in here are sort of typical, not particularly significant. Now according to our range rule of thumb, these values over here are called significantly high. And the values on this side are called significantly low. Because over here, we're more than two standard deviations from the mean, but we're above the mean. And here, we're more than two standard deviations from the mean, but we're below the mean. So the, the cutoff is the mean plus two standard deviations and then the mean minus two standard deviations for each of those intervals. Okay, we've got our mean and we've got two standard, or we've got our standard deviation as well. So if we're trying to find the cutoff um, for values that are significantly low, we'll take the mean and subtract two standard deviations. The mean is 13 and we're subtracting two times the number of standard deviations. I'm going to use this decimal approximation rather than the 2.5 because I'd like to be a little bit more accurate if I can. I believe that they ask us to round to one decimal place again. It's always good to wait till the end to round though, so we don't create an error and then compound that error by using approximate values. So we get 7.9 approximately. So if we've got um, 26 births that we're talking about. If there are less than or equal to 7.9 girls, um, then we'll say that that value is significantly low. So this value is significantly low and values lower than that are also significantly low. Or significantly high. We're adding two standard deviations. So 
we've got 13 plus 2 times 2.5495. And you get about 8.099, or we could round to 8 point, or 18, excuse me, 0.1. It's 18.1 girls or more out of those 26 births. Okay, so let's go to my lab statistics and enter it, make sure that they like it. Values of 7.9, or I wrote lower, I guess we're talking about numbers of girls, so I guess we should be using fewer. Values of 7.9 girls or less than that, fewer than that, are significantly low and values of 18.1 girls or uh, more than 18.1 girls in that 26, that group of 26 babies, that's significantly high. Okay, now part C says, is the result of 21 girls um, or is the result of 21 girls, a result that is significantly high. What does it suggest about the effectiveness of the method? Okay, so 21 is greater than that 18.1. So if it was on the number line over here, that 21 girls would be over in this, this tail over here. So that is definitely significantly high because it's over here. So the result is significantly high because 21 girls is greater than the 18.1 girls, that limit that we've got right there. So a result of 21 girls would suggest that the method works. It's effective because you're actually getting more girls than expected. Um, and that would be very significant. 